Αγαπητοί τηλεθεατέ του Hellenic TV, καλησπέρα σα. Όπω όλοι θα γνωρίζετε, στι 12 του Δεκέμβρη θα έχουμε τι γενικέ εκλογέ. Όπω θα ακούσουμε αργότερα, ίσω να είναι οι σημαντικότερε εκλογέ που έχουν διεξαχθεί ποτέ τα τελευταία 40 χρόνια. Μαζί μα έχουμε απόψε τη Φέρια Κλακ, η οποία διεκδικεί, θα διεκδικήσει το Enfield North, όπου υπάρχει έναν σεβαστών ποσών συμπατριωτών μας. Θα πω μερικά λόγια στα αγγλικά σχετικά με την Φέρια Κλακ για να γνωρίσουμε ποιο, ποιος είναι αυτός ή ποια είναι αυτή η υποψηφία του Enfi North. Η Φέρια Κλακ είναι Φέρια Κλακ daughter of a Kurdish refugee family from Turkey who came to North London uh, uh, in the 80s. She grew up in North London, in Hackney. She studied biomedical science, Bachelor of Science, a master, if I can pronounce this, in bioinformatics. Working in NHS in pathology laboratory for six years. Has been a local counselor for 14 years. She's a deputy leader currently in Hackney. She has been a cabinet member for nine years delivering practical solutions to everyday problems on transport, environment, health and social care. She also, she also ran her own cafe in Enfield. Ferial is known for her innovation around sustainable transport, creating healthy cities. She was a cycling champion for London castles for nine years. She is responsible for making Hackney the best cycling borough in the UK starting the school street scheme to tackle air pollution around schools. She introduced electric streets in Hackney and spent many years campaigning on measures to tackle poor air pollution. She delivered the largest solar power project on social housing at Bannister House to tackle fewer poverty and generate clean energy. Recently, Feria has been responsible for health and social care where she has been campaigning against the privatization of GP services across London. She has been leading on work to integrate health and social care services across city corporation and Hackney to deal with the lack of investment and growing demand in social care. This is just a brief, I mean, we can go on all evening about her activities and her work in the community but just briefly, because uh, time permitting, uh, we need to discuss other things tonight. Uh, Ferial, good evening, welcome. And uh, let me, uh, first of all, wish you congratulations on your election. Uh, it's an honor to have you as, an, as a Labour candidate in Enfield. And I don't think Enfield will be, will be, um, will be more, uh, I don't think Enfield will be uh, uh, disappointed in what I've read here today and what work you will be doing when you become an MP. Uh, Ferial, uh, what, is the, what these elections mean? Uh, why are they so important for every voter to go out and vote at these elections? Mm -hmm. And why they should go out and vote? F f f okay, I'll leave it with you. Yeah. Um, First of all, thank you very much, George, for having me. You're that welcome. was a wonderful Helen introduction. TV. And I want to uh, thank Helen TV for inviting me and giving me this opportunity um, to, to talk about myself, uh, to talk about my work and to talk more about Enfield North. Um, George, this, this election is going to be, uh, it's, it's a really significant election and will change uh, our country um, for generations to come. Um, we have had uh, austerity for austerity measures for the last nine years. We've had cuts to education. We've had cuts to NHS. We've had a severe cuts to local uh, services, to local councils. We've had cuts to our police. The fabric of our society has changed. Um, and I think, and, and then you've got, you've got a government who are trying to uh, also push through a, a hard 
Brexit, which will have a dire impact on the economy of this country, on jobs, on the environment, on the future of our children in this country. Um, so I think that's why it's not this, this election is so significant because it will change the future of our children, it will change the future and the services that we rely on. And I don't think, I don't think that the country could take another five years and, and, and possibly more of, of a Tory government. And that's why I think it's so important for everyone to register and to go out and vote. The, um, these elections are not only around Brexit, but whether it will be Brexit one way or the other, it will affect forever services like NHS, services for the elderly, education. Um, what is uh, Labour going to do if we get into power, even when we get into power? What, uh, what are the challenges ahead the following day mm -hmm. after the elections if we get the Labour government? Um, absolutely, this isn't just about Brexit. Well, Brexit is really, really significant for a country, but you're right, it's not just about Brexit. It is about NHS. It's about the fact that this government has basically deprived the NHS of funding where you've got shortage, a chronic shortage of nurses, a chronic shortage of, of GPs, and our schools in and around Enfield have suffered cuts. So, so it is all it's about, and we've got, at the moment, we've got a social, social care crisis the current government have been promising a solution we've been waiting for a green paper on social care for three years local councils are, are you know the services are on its knees so that's where we need we need a Labour government look so when Labour government comes to power we have a lot we have huge job to do as, as I said earlier, the fabric, the, the, the 10 years, almost 10 years of austerity has changed the fabric of our society. We have homelessness, record high homelessness. We have children, we have 120,000 children living in, uh, who are homeless living in temporary accommodation. Um, so this, so Labour government has a huge job in trying to reverse the cuts. So it's about reversing the cuts in our policing so we can slowly start putting more police on our streets so our communities feel safe on their streets. Um, it's about investing in our schools. Um, so, you know, education shouldn't be a privilege. Education should be a right. So it's about investing in education from naught to, 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 to when they're older. So Labour is promising to provide 30 uh, hours of free childcare for all two to four year olds, enabling parents to go back to work. We, we are committing to reversing the uh, cuts in education. We are committing to opening up a thousand sure start centres which had you know the first you know the, the early years in a child's life are so important they dictate they dictate how the rest of your life they say Jen, so much science out there that says four years the first four years are really important and those sure start centres were opened up to support families to make sure that families had support around bringing up their children so they had better outcomes later in life so the opening up those uh, 30,000 sorry 1,000 1, um, short start centres, but it's also putting in the funding that NHS so needs, so desperately needs. It is about the 40 billion investment into our NHS. It is recruiting the uh, thousands of nurses that we need. It is about the uh, recruit and training the GPs that we need. You know, in Enfield North, there are some areas where there is no single GP. People can't get appointments. They have to wait weeks and weeks or they have to go to the urgent care centre at Chase Farm Hospital, which is also under threat. There are, there are lots and we also have, we have plans to completely transform the, 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 climate, the, the green industry. So we've got a plan for a green, new green deal. Um, there are, there, there are, there are, but it's, it's not going to be easy. We are going to, there's a lot to 
uh, to be undone. But our schools, our council, our NHS, our police um, desperately need um, funding to be able to function. Um, and with this, uh, boroughs like Enfield desperately need the, the houses, the homes that the Labour government have committed to. We've committed to building a million homes and working with local councils to deliver those. Faya, you mentioned a number of uh, issues in Enfield North. Are there any other challenges in Enfield North? Uh, you wake up on the 13th of December, you are an MP. What are your first uh, priorities there? I know you mentioned a few, but uh, mm -hmm. How, what do you start? Yes. <laughs> there are, there, there are, there, there are uh, plenty of, of issues and problems that we need to tackle um, as, a, as, a, as a borough, as a CLP, as a country. Um, but for me, the, the most pressing issues at the moment is uh, to make sure that Enfield North gets the, a fair deal. At the moment, Enfield gets a really low... Uh, spending per head on health um, when the Tories when Cameron stood outside Chase Farm Hospital and said I would not let this shut uh, let the hospital be downgraded and then they Before downgraded they yep they shut yeah. it down when they did that they could only do it there was a, there was a recommendation that it could it should only be done if there was investment into primary care, that is GPs in this neighbourhood, because the neighbourhood could not cope otherwise, they did not do that. So my priority is to campaign, is to fight for better uh, health funding for Enfield North, to look at how we can uh, deliver more GP surgeries so our residents can have access, like the rest of London, uh, to, to GPs. To, to health services they need. Um, the second thing I it, it's a that's a, a real issue uh, for me for my residents and for London um, is uh, police and community safety. Uh, Tories have cut twenty one thousand police officers, 22. although twenty but although they are committing to uh, bring in investing in police officers, but they look, they have spent nine years, nine years cutting experienced police officers. So la a Labour government will invest in a police, we will reverse the cuts to a police and start introducing and bringing more police on, on board. But I want to make sure that I'm out there campaigning so Enfield North gets the police numbers it needs now. I have families now going out, patrolling the streets after schools to make sure that their children are safe. We live in one of the biggest uh, economies. We're one of the largest European countries. Okay. This is unacceptable. We need our safer neighbourhoods teams on the streets. We need more police. So that's the second thing I want to campaign on. Um, and the third thing I want to start uh, talking about and campaign on, on is housing. Look, housing, everything we do, uh, it comes from, you know, flows from housing. Uh, the, you know, our, ch our children's mental health, our sense of belonging, uh, our ability to to embed in a community, to find a job. All of these, all of these, you know, they stem from having a secure, safe roof over your head. And now, in you know, there are far too many families in Enfield. They can't. They don't have that. That we have huge number. We have one of the highest numbers of uh, fam. Uh, Families living in temporary accommodation, almost 5,000 families are living in temporary accommodation. And if, you're, uh, if you want to set up your family, you want to buy something, a flat, you want to buy a house, you can't afford it. The houses aren't there. The Tories promised 200,000 starter homes under Cameron. Not a single one has been built, not a single one. So I want to start lobbying and campaigning and raising the issues around housing. I want us in Enfield North to have more social housing. I want us to have more affordable housing for people to buy. And we also need to have tackle uh, the issues around uh, rented private rented sector as well too many families are having to deal with rip off rents and and wage you know rents are increasing faster than wages we need we need to tackle this so my three issues are uh, going to be health sorry four issues will be health it will be housing it will be policing but finally it will be education cuts right 
education cuts because when we talk policing is really important for people to feel safe and secure on their streets but the we be the the really in, the high rises in serious crime on our streets is just a symptom it's a symptom of underfunded services for 10 years so we need to so, uh, so youth services and education is one of the other areas that I want to concentrate on, that I will be fighting for in Enfield North to make sure that my residents get the fair deal for education and for youth services. Thank you very much. I, it's not clear how many, how many more um, candidates I will be interviewing, but one question I will be asking them uh, is uh, what, are, um, what are your thoughts on the Cyprus problem? And how are you planning to help uh, promote the struggle uh, mm -hmm. of the Cypriot people and indeed all those nations who are oppressed, where they have uh, uh, human rights uh, 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 violations? And how would you fight in the House of Commons? Okay. Uh, thank you for that. I am, as you said at the beginning of the interview, I am of Kurdish background. Um, my family fled. Family, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so my family were refugee in this country, um, and my, you know, my Kurdish people have been oppressed across the Middle East uh, for over a hundred years. Um, so I know uh, the the you know the feeling of of, of communities being persecuted. Uh, so I, you know, and I feel very strongly about that. And I see, we see now the human rights abuses uh, against, uh, well, it's happening Mind across the world, or against minorities across the world. So I, I, I want to be a voice for those um, who are being oppressed, who are being persecuted. Um, but on the, on the Cyprus issue, um, I, have, I have lots of friends, uh, both from... Uh, Greek identity. and from the yeah from the Turkish from Turkish ethnic backgrounds, and look in Enfield these communities live very happily side by absolutely, side, absolutely. Um, and we have to absolutely and it's the same with the Turkish and Kurdish communities. Yes. We live happily, very happily, right. side by side. But you know, and sadly, but they, you know they, we have governments back in some of those countries who are uh, who are to that we cannot live together. But yes, at one look here. In England, as you suggested, absolutely, and it they just take them us wrong. Absolutely, but on the on the um, Cyprus issue, I guess it's for me. It's really important that the continued cessation of host, um, hostilities is a priority, um, and that next, that confidence building measures are, uh, and talks uh, continue. Um, but it's it's about having making sure that the talks continue, that so we can get to a place where. We deliver a, a just and a lasting political solution. I think a lot of a lot of people, a lot of my residents, um, want the talks to 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 round, you know, to begin around the reunification of of, of Cyprus. And I will um, I will support um, the 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 Labour friends of um, Cyprus. Um, there are there are lots of uh, organisations that I look forward to working with, and I will be working with my residents to make sure that I represent their interest in the best possible way. way. Thank you. And yeah. I love Cyprus. I've been to many. You've times. been to many. Yes, You've been to Paphos. I've been, I've been to Paphos. Yes. Limassol. I no, haven't been to Limassol. One day you should go to Lefkara. I took Bambos once. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> my husband's uh, my husband's uh, my in-laws. Uh, lived in the English, but they lived in uh, Cyprus. They were the family were in the army, so they lived there so for many years. So one day you will have a house to retire in Cyprus. I hope so. <laughs> I very much hope well, so. Many years from now. Yes. Very yes, tell me, so. what made you enter politics? That's a very good question. See, I my background is in science, so ah. I studied science. I did pathology and I did bioinformatics, but I grew up at a time I was uh, I was. And I guess it was under Tory government at that time, in like mid-90s, when 
Tories when they was leading up to election and they kept using language that was really inflammatory against there was anti-immigration uh, and blaming immigrants for everything like they are doing now. And again, the Tories had been in power for so long and had deprived uh, the public services for so long. But instead of taking responsibility, they were blaming uh, foreigners, they were blaming immigration. And as an immigrant, I felt, I felt very hurt and my parents worked so hard. Um, so I got involved in the uh, college um, students' union um, and I, I became involved then. And then I... As I went to university and I came back, so I'd been involved in politics at college, I came back and I got involved in my local community, my local tennis resident association, and there were problems again with like young people in the area. I got involved, I started to live, you know, engaging my local councillors, and as being a Kurd, I can't escape politics, mainly <laughs> because my mum talks about it every day. So I always had um, an interest, but it was through my local community. It was through my, you know, estate. Uh, it was through the, the TRAs that I got involved. And then they said to me that I, I joined the Labour Party and they said, oh, you know, do you want to become secretary? You won't have to do anything. Before I knew I was secretary, I was chair, I was standing to become a councillor. And um, I... Are you a young, let's hope, uh, the younger generation um, uh, uh, takes an example from you and, and join um, a kind of I a think party. I think it's, it, it is really important. I wanted to make a change to my community. I want, and I was desperate. I was looking at my estate, my neighbourhood, and I wanted to make change. And there are lots of our young people who are incredibly aspirational for themselves, for the neighbourhood, for their country, and I hope they will get involved. Feriel, uh, at the beginning of the uh, interview, I mentioned uh, quite a few achievements, but... Um, it doesn't stay. Which, which achievement do you feel most proud of during your years in politics as 40 years councillor, nine years as a cabinet member? Tell me, which one are you proud of? Your, uh, which one do you feel most proud of your achievement? Although they are all yes. good. <laughs> um, We've been, I, was, I was really proud uh, to lead, to be leading borough around sustainable transport. So creating environment that everyone was able to walk yeah. and cycle. Um, because, you know, I, I, they say, you know, you measure the, the, you know, the democracy in a country by how high the pavements are because it's, you should allow disabled people in wheelchairs and to be able to go around really easily. And I was very adamant that I, you know, disabled people, old people, children could walk safely and, and, and you know, in, around their streets. So I, I worked really hard over the 10 years to transform the, the pavements, the parks, um, the roads. And so that was making, you know, it's about things like, you know, making all of the bus stops in Hackney accessible by wheelchair. They're all disabled accessible, 100% of them. And it was about making sure that we had buses that went everywhere because some of our poorest communities can't afford to drive, so they rely on public transport. And I wanted to make sure that public transport was the first point of call, that everyone had access, it was the best form of transport. So I tra tried to transport and worked very hard to do that, from planting thousands of trees on streets so old people can, when they're walking, can take rest, have been putting, you know, basic things like that. We, we transformed Hackney, it's now one of the best cycling boroughs in London, it has amazing uh, bus routes and the trains are more frequent but one of the things that I started two years ago uh, which is now being delivered across uh, not London but across the country is called School Street oh, yeah. and that was because we have the pollution levels in this city are so bad that we have children growing up with their lung growth, yeah, with their lung growth uh, stunted, so with smaller lungs, and they're going to experience problems with the, for the rest of their lives. So I was very, very keen to stop at times when children were walking to school, um, so and then when they were leaving school, I was very keen to uh, to, to to create clean air around the school. So we introduced school streets, so we reduce traffic around the school in the morning and at night and um, after school so now this is a scheme that's been delivered across well the country congratulations and also I look forward to congratulating you as an MP
Thank you. And uh, looking forward to working with you in the future and to welcome you here at the Hellenic Studios as an MP to keep us updated what's happening. I but what is your last, uh, last message? Not your last message. <laughs> what is the uh, final kind of t to the residents? What do you urge them to do? Thank and you very much. Oh, thank you very camera. much um, to Hellenic TV for having me here today. What I would say to our residents, not just in Enfield North, but across Enfield, this election will change the future of our country for generations to come. If you care about services for your children, for the elderly in our community, if you care about the policing, the NHS, your children's education, it is really important that you register to vote. And it's really important that you vote Labour because only Labour is, has got the policies and is willing to invest in those services that we all rely on. I hope you will vote for me and I hope you will vote for Labour across Enfield. Thank you very much, Fariel. Thank you, George. Thank you for having me. Agapiti, tilefiates. Kalinik, tisus.